in the last 7 billion years, we have that accelerated expansion, which so far was explained by the cosmological constant. What we're seeing today is that this acceleration is not as steep and we seem to, to see a slowdown, a weakening of dark energy. We're here at the APS conference and most of what we've been talking about in the different physics disciplines have covered about 5%, maybe 30% of the universe. But here we're going to be talking about the rest of the 70%. So could you tell us why you're um, here at the conference and what you've been presenting? Yeah, so indeed my focus is to study dark energy and so that's really what is making 70% of the energy content of the universe. It's dark energy is responsible for the accelerated expansion of the universe that was discovered barely 20 years ago. And we still do have no idea of what dark energy is. And this is really uh, what I'm studying with the dark energy spectroscopic instrument. And that's why I'm here at the APS. Excellent. So could you tell us a little bit more about the instrument to start with? DESI is using a four meter telescope at the uh, Mayal telescope in Kitt Peak in Arizona. And everything else but the primary mirror has been entirely refurbished by the collaboration. We've built a huge corrector, which allows us to cover seven square degrees at a time. And then the light goes to the focal plane, which is really the beauty of the instrument. It consists of 5,000 robotic fiber positioners that within two minutes can be located to within a few microns to where the light of the galaxies that we will be studying will fall on the focal plane. And then the light trickles down to the spectrographs. We have 10 spectrographs where we measure the spectra of the galaxies and therefore the redshift. Excellent. So you're looking at the, the galaxies out in our universe. What kind of uh, area are you monitoring? So we're actually, um, the goal of DESI is to build the largest 3D map of the universe. And to do so, we are measuring the spectra of over 40 million galaxies and quasars all over the universe, from nearby galaxies out to quasars that are located 12 billion uh, light years away from us. And so we're really probing the entire history of the universe with these over 40 million galaxies and quasars. Excellent. And we've had hints of data from you before. So could you set the scene for us about what we've heard already? And then we're going to lead into the exciting results that you've just shared recently. So over the past several decades, we've slowly established what is now considered as the standard model of cosmology, which is based on this 70% of dark energy, for which we uh, had all reasons to believe that it could be a cosmological constant. This uh, standard model of cosmology could actually reproduce pretty well all the observations that we had coming from the cosmic microwave background to even studies of the 3D map, prior versions of 3D map of uh, galaxies. And uh, so, what DESI was set out to do was to really fine tune the study of dark energy and see if indeed all the information that we were gathering were still compatible with a uh, um, lambda CDM model, so a cosmological constant to explain the dark energy. And what we've discovered a year ago, so in April of 2024, was that instead of confirming this cosmological constant, we seem to be seeing a deviation from a cosmological constant and instead uh, discovering that dark energy might be varying with time. And this was totally unexpected and which was really the big surprise of the first year publication that we achieved last year. And what impact does that then have on the evolution of our universe to not have a constant but have this evolution over time? So the impact is pretty tiny so far. I mean, what we're seeing is really a very subtle effect. So what we're doing is we're uh, modeling dark energy and uh, we're allowing it to vary with time. Um, the best fit model that we're observing today is very similar to a cosmological constant. For the first 7 billion years of the history of the universe, we still have this period of decelerated expansion, which is due to the fact that uh, at that epoch, the universe is still dominated by matter, the dark matter that composes roughly 25% of the universe. And then in the most recent universe, in the last 7 billion years, we have that accelerated expansion, which so far was explained by the cosmological constant. What we're seeing today is that this acceleration is not as steep as would have been the case for the cosmological constant. And we seem to, to see a slowdown, a weakening of dark energy. But the effect is still very subtle. And that's why we need the additional data, which we just released. Excellent. So then tell us what did uh, this additional data uh, show us with the, the results? Now, instead of having just six moon galaxies that we studied, which were the, the analysis of the first year of data, we now have just released results from the study of 14 million galaxies. So over more than two 
twice as many galaxies as we had in the year one. And we are totally confirming the result of varying dark energy that we discovered a year ago. So this is very exciting. Uh, this was unexpected last year. Now we're a little bit more ready to be finding such a dynamic dark energy. And so we really performed many more tests than we had time to do last year. And so we think that the results that we're obtaining are very robust and uh, very stable with uh, the additional data that we collected. And what kind of confidence do you have for your results? So DESI alone has only a very mild preference for this dynamic dark energy, but we get much better results by combining DESI with other data sets. In particular, we're combining DESI with data from the cosmic microwave background. So that was collected with the Planck satellite, but also with the ACT uh, instrument. And this combination allows us to reach a 3.1 sigma detection of a preference for varying dark energy. And uh, when additionally, uh, including data sets coming from type 1a supernovae, then we can reach a level of significance that uh, goes up to 4.2 sigma. Well, this is very exciting and really interesting to see these results. What does the future look like for this experiment? So this is the done taking data. The original program was set out for five years. So we're roughly uh, halfway through the analysis of our data. Uh, we're actually going really fast. We have collected so far roughly 40 million galaxies, which was the goal that we were set out to do. And because we're having such interesting results, we actually uh, requested an extension of the program for an additional two and a half years. So the goal for DESI is to take data until December of 2028. With that, we would have collected hopefully over 60 million galaxies, and that would allow us to really have a five sigma detection of this dynamic dark energy without even having to include supernovae. Just DESI and CMB, we would have this five sigma detection um, by the end of the DESI project, and so this is really what we're, we want to be a. Excellent. And and in physics, this is really the threshold we want to cross to say that we are confident that this is the way things right. work. Right, yeah. Five Sigma is the, the milestone for uh, really announcing new discovery. We're not there yet. Um, the first results were a surprise. <laughs> now we seem to be more confident that varying dark energy is there, but we want to reach that Five Sigma threshold indeed to, to really be able to claim a discovery. So when you were analyzing the data, how could you be confident that um, the the wishes of the scientists don't influence the results that you're getting? That's a very good question. And indeed, nowadays, to avoid confirmation bias, what we do is, to, is we blind the data. So in our case, what we did is that we actually added a random noise to the redshift of the galaxies so that the, all the study, the pipeline was entirely determined on a blinded set of catalog, which means that we didn't know where the galaxies were laying exactly. And so we could not bias our analysis in order to find what we were expecting to find. And that's maybe what gave us confidence that the deviation we were seeing from that SEM was indeed really there because we only looked at the real catalogs, the real map of the universe after we had uh, fixed all the parameters of the analysis. Excellent. Well, these are really fascinating results, and I'm very happy that you came to share them with us. And uh, good luck with the rest of the research as well. Well, thank you very much. We're really excited as well.